What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a look at how I created these eyes on the witch model. I hope you find it useful. We'll start off by painting the whites and for that I mixed up a dull desaturated grey tone by first taking a bit of this secret weapon old mud and lightening it with some scale colour pale skin. Then I mixed in a bit of scale colour adriatic blue to get this blue grey tone. I decided it wasn't quite dark enough so I mixed in a tiny bit of black just to dull it down slightly. This is going to look way darker on your palette than on the model so don't be too concerned about that. Alright so then I just applied the grey tone over the eyeballs on the miniature. And we'll do this over a couple of layers to get a nice smooth coverage. Mix some of the pale skin into the grey to lighten it and we'll use that for our first highlight. Applying the paint onto the eyes in the areas where you would be catching the most light. Once you've applied a couple of layers you can blend out the edges by using some stippling. Usually I would thin down the paint to a thick glaze at this stage. But you can also use the same layer consistency and just ease up on the brush in order to control how much of the paint gets left on the surface. So you can actually manipulate the level of transparency by being gentle and barely touching the surface. You're going to leave less paint, so it's not going to be as opaque as when you apply more pressure. The general stippling technique is the same in that you're still tapping the tip of the brush on and around the edge of your highlight letting small dots obscure the join between the two colours. The only difference here is that you're using a lighter touch. It's much faster doing it this way but it does require more control. I just like to show different approaches when I'm making videos. I think it gives you more things to try out and it stops me going insane explaining the same things over and over again. <laughs> Once you have those edges blended out, add a bit more pale skin into the mix and we'll go back for a second highlight. Applying the paint in the same spots as before, but this time making them about half the size. Once those are in place, we can blend them out using some more stippling. Still keeping that same paint consistency and just easing up on the brush so that you're using a very gentle pressure. That way you're going to have some control over the opacity of your dots. If you don't use a gentle touch here, the dots will be too opaque and you'll find it hard to create a subtle fade. You can see this is a lot faster than using a glaze consistency. So if you don't have the patience for glazing, this might be something you want to try out. Alright, so now that we've painted the whites, we can move on to doing the irises. If you look at some reference pictures of eyes, you can see that as well as being full of really intricate and interesting texture, they have quite a dark outline around the edge of the iris. Now when you're painting, it's usually a good idea to go from the outside and work your way in. So with that in mind, we will start off with that dark outline. And to do that, we're first going to take some scale colour Adriatic Blue and mix a bit of black into it, darkening it down. To create the shape of the iris, we'll first paint the outside edge, just painting on a thin curved line. Then we'll fill in the shape, blocking in the whole area with our dark turquoise. Here I'm kind of using a bit of a cheat by having the eye look upwards. We don't need to create a perfect circle because the upper half of it is going to be hidden behind the eyelid, so that kind of makes things a bit easier. Once you've done that, you can start to build up the colour of the iris. For that, we'll take some of this Chimera Magenta and darken it down a little with some black. Now, you don't need to use Chimera paints for this. You can use any magenta colour that you like. And we're going to paint this onto the middle of the iris, leaving that dark blue outline around the outside edge. Now, my original plan here was to use little lines radiating out from the center point, but I kind of underestimated just how small the eye was, so I quickly abandoned that and went for a more random texture. 
as we really don't have enough surface to be able to control those little lines. So as we're going for a textured finish, you don't need to worry about getting this layer nice and smooth or even fully opaque really. Just roughly place it into the centre of the iris, leaving the dark blue around the outside. Add some more of the magenta into your mix to increase the saturation and we'll go back and essentially do the same thing again. Just roughly placing some of the colour into the centre of the iris, trying to leave some gaps so that you have some of that darker colour showing through underneath. Again, don't worry too much about the coverage or getting this smooth, that's not what we're going for here. We want some variation and texture to the surface, so trying to be precise and smooth is going to be counterproductive. Add some pale skin into the mix to lighten it and we'll go back and paint on some more obvious textures. Just applying little dots of colour onto the iris. Now that we've created a bit of texture, we'll add in our pupil so that we can get a better idea of how it's going to look. For that, I'm just taking some black and painting on a little circle in the middle of the iris. Add some more pale skin into the mix and we'll start to build up the highlights. So here I'm placing these as small little dots on the right side of the eye. I'm only doing them on one side in order to create a decent amount of contrast. If we were to do it on both sides, it would look a bit samey. Doing it this way, we're going to have a clear delineation between the light side and the, the dark side. Mix in some more pale skin to brighten the colour and we'll do that again. Just focusing on that right side of the iris. There's hardly any space to work with, so I'll just do a couple of dots. Add some more pale skin into the mix, making it really quite bright this time, and we'll go back and paint on a couple tiny highlights. Now we'll take some of that pale skin on its own and place a highlight onto the pupil near the iris. I'm not using white here because the rest of the model is fairly dark and if I use white that's going to end up being the brightest point on the model and you'll be able to see it from across the room so it'll end up being the only focal point and we don't want that so I'm going to use the pale skin as it's going to be bright enough but not too bright. Remember we've got the light coming down from above so our highlight should be near the top of the pupil in order to simulate that. That placement seems quite good but it's probably a bit too small so I'll go back and make it a bit bigger. I think it looks kind of cool if you can make the highlight overlap slightly onto the iris. In order to create more contrast I'll add a small highlight into the darker part of the iris, just about here. Yep, so the size is okay but it's just not quite bright enough so I'll add a bit more. Whoops. That's okay, we can wipe that off with a, a damp brush. Alright, so now that that crisis is averted, we'll just try that again. And there we go, that's much better this time. To finish off the eye, we can add some shading to the white. And we'll do that by taking some of the dark magenta and thinning it down with a bit of water to a thickish glaze consistency. So this should be more familiar territory for most of you. Then with hardly any on the brush, we're going to pull it over the eyeball, drawing the brush down to that lower part of the eye. Then we can grab a second clean, slightly damp brush and use it to pull the edge of the glaze across the surface, moving it away from the shadow. That way we're going to stretch the edge of the glaze thin so that it fades out and doesn't dry with an obvious line or watermark. You can do this over a few layers until you like how it looks. Just make sure that it's dry before you apply each new layer or you'll tear the surface of the paint. To add some extra detail we can take some of that dark magenta again, this time using the thicker consistency and we'll paint on a few small blood vessels onto the white areas. Make sure you have a good point to your brush when you're doing this. 
and try and trace a couple spidery lines on the surface. Being light with the brush so that you're only painting with the very tip. And I'll do that on the other side as well. Keep a second brush on hand in case you make a mistake and need to wipe it off the surface. So a bit like this. If you want, you can take some of your pale skin and add a few small highlights onto the white areas. I'll put one over here at the very edge of the iris so that it lines up with the one on the pupil. Yeah, I like that. It looks really cool. It's added quite a bit of contrast there. Eyes usually have a wet surface, so they tend to have a glistening look to them. If we add a few small dots of pale skin here and there, it should help to simulate that. I don't want to overdo it though, just a couple random ones on each side should be enough. We've managed to create quite a lot of detail in a relatively small space, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out overall. Thanks as always for your support, and I think that's about all for me. So, thanks again. Bye for now. Yep, it's size... Yep, that's... Would it help to confuse it if we ran away more? Oh, shut up and go and change your armour.